In this video, I will let you know everything you need to know about airsoft gases. All this will help you prevent problems and put your gas replica to good use. First things first, how does the gas actually work in a gun? When you pull the trigger, the striker punches the exhaust valve of the magazine and it opens it for a split of a second. This releases a small amount of gas from the magazine into the nozzle, which shoots the BB forward and pushes the slide back to load the next BB. We are simplifying here a bit, but basically that's how it works. Now, what does the gas consist of? The main ingredient in airsoft gases is propane. It is often mixed up with silicon oil and some other gases in small amounts to give the airsoft gas different properties. And this is where the trouble starts. There is no unified way of marking these gases. One of the decent ways to mark gases is to use colors like blue, green, red, black. From blue being the least powerful to high pressure black gas. If you are a seasoned airsoft player, you probably know this. But if you are new, it can already be quite confusing. But wait, it gets worse. You can find gases like ultra air, power air gas, two times green gas and so on. Like what the actual f And to make matters worse, if you take two green gases from two different brands, they will very likely perform differently. Now, what should we as regular airsofters do to make sense all of this mess? Despite all these fancy branded gases, it's really up to two things you should care about with gas. The pressure and added silicon. Both of these are pretty straightforward. The pressure is measured in PSI. The more PSI, the more powerful the gas. Let's take Nimrod as an example that does it quite well. On top of using the color codes for the bottles, they also write the actual pressure in PSI on the bottle. To give you an overview, here are all the pressures. Blue, 116, green, and you see it on the screen. As for the silicon oil part, it is as simple as silicon yes or silicon no. The oil in the gas is meant to slightly lubricate the O-rings, valves, and insides of the replica with each shot. That sounds great on paper, eliminating maintenance to some degree. It is not that simple. While it is true that these parts need lubrication, the gas will eventually go through your hop-up chamber and barrel while propelling the BB. And as you might know, getting too much oil or grease on the hop-up bucket can ruin your accuracy and range. In terms, that means cleaning your barrel more often, which to me sounds like more maintenance. Personally, I prefer my gas without the silicon oil because I can do the maintenance myself, allowing me to better control where the oil gets. Yet, it seems like the majority of gases sold on the internet do contain the oil, so make sure to clean your gun often enough anyway. But why do we need so many types of gases? That's because gas is affected by the temperature outside. A weaker gas, let's say blue or green, will stop working when it gets colder outside because the lower the temperature, the less pressure you have inside of any gas bottle. To illustrate, Playing with black gas at 5 degrees Celsius can give you roughly similar results as if you'd play with green gas at 20 degrees Celsius. But there is a limit to what you can do by changing the gas. Naturally, now you are thinking that this could be a good way of making the gun stronger. Well, yes and no. If you switch from green gas to red gas, you will probably get more power. But it can also make your gun stop working or even damage it. Now why? If you put high enough pressure into the magazine, the hammer will struggle to open the valve, resulting in the so-called light striking, where your replica will be very weak or fail to shoot altogether. On the other hand, too much pressure can also damage the O-rings, which then results in your magazine's leaking, or increase the wear on the sears. So, in the summer, you need to use a weaker gas, and in winter, a stronger one and something I have learned the hard way. If you are playing at low temperatures using a high pressure gas, don't forget to release it later when you are storing the magazines at the room temperature. Otherwise, the pressure will increase in your magazines, which can ruin the O-rings inside, resulting in leaks later. Now, which gas do you need for your replica? There are differences between guns and they don't always use the same gas for the same temperature. For example, when they have a heavier slide, you will need a stronger gas to avoid malfunctions, such as light striking, feeding issues, 
or just inconsistent shots. Furthermore, it also depends on the temperature of the location where you will be playing. Generally, you should check which gas type the manufacturer recommends for a specific temperature ranges. For example, on the Norwich website, you can find the gas and BB weight recommendations for every single gun on the respective product pages. Now, this is what the official script says that our editor wrote, but since I know it wasn't that helpful, here is what I do when packing for an airsoft game. If it's warm in the summer, I take green gas and red gas. If it's cold outside, I take red and black. When I go to the field, I try the weaker one. If it works, I keep using it. If not, I step it up with the stronger one. And no, I never use blue gas. And if it's very cold, I take HPA instead, because even black gas stops working if it's cold enough. Can you change the power by using a different gas? Yeah, kinda. In the real world, there is usually a bit of wiggle room on the gas you choose. For example, if you take a pistol with which you are recommended to use green gas below 17 degrees, there is nothing really stopping you from using it at 20 degrees. Doing so will give your gun more power. Just make sure not to use black gas in the summer. And keep in mind that making your gun more powerful this way will put more stress on the internals. Pro tip now. If you are having trouble increasing your power output, try a weaker gas. I know it sounds weird, but remember how I talked about valves and that if you have too much pressure in the magazine, the hammer won't be able to fully open the valve and release the gas? That's exactly the reason why sometimes, when troubleshooting an issue, you should try to step down to a weaker gas and see what the chrono tells you. A good example would be from red gas to green gas in the summer or from black to red in winter. You might actually get more power if the temperature happens to be at the edge of what is recommended. What happens inside of the magazine? When filling the magazine with gas through the inlet valve, you are basically trying to move liquid gas from the bottle to the mag. That's why we are holding the gas bottle upside down, so the liquid gas is always at the bottom of the container, close to the nozzle. While shooting, there is always liquid gas at the bottom of the magazine and gaseous gas on the top. When you pull the trigger, you are releasing a small amount of the ga gas, uh, gas gas into the system to make the replica shoot and cycle. I just cannot pronounce this. Gaseous. Is that even the right way? Gaseous? I don't know if that... It's probably English, but yeah. This is a very basic explanation and I would highly recommend you to watch a video about magazines and valves that I recorded some time ago. It will explain some of the most important concepts you should definitely know about. Link in the description. Now, there is something called the cooldown effect. This happens when you are firing your pistol too often in a short time or reloading the same magazine with gas while it's still cold. Without going too much into detail, the magazine cools down because of physics. For the nerds out there, the gas changing its state from liquid back to gas is an endothermic reaction, so that's why it cools down. The problem is that this prohibits the liquid gas from evaporating as fast as it usually would, which, as a result, lowers the pressure in the magazine and causes malfunctions like light striking. To avoid this from happening, pick your shots wisely and use spare mags instead of constantly reloading the same one over and over again. If you need to warm up your magazines quicker, put them in the pocket of your pants and let your body temperature do the work for you. That's what I usually do when it's really cold out there. I just keep them in the pockets all the time. And now this is a fitting moment to briefly talk about CO2 as a propellant. CO2 is very powerful. Actually, it has around 850 psi, which is about eight times more powerful than blue gas and four times more powerful than black gas, the most powerful one. That makes it less affected by low temperatures and delivers a strong recoil, which many players want because it feels more realistic and can be more reliable than gas. However, you need a different valve in your magazine to compensate for the higher pressure and you should only use CO2 in colder environments because otherwise it puts too much stress on the gun. Generally speaking, if you use CO2 in the summer, it will inevitably increase the wear and tear on your internals. In the end, you should always make sure that your gun is meant to run CO2 before using it. And that's been it for this video. I hope it helped you to get a 
clearer pictures on all the different gases and what's broken about them. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.